Christian and his friends are digging 20 meters down, taking turns at 24 hour shifts. There's no light and little oxygen, but what they bring up is precious. This is the start of a supply chain leading all the way from this makeshift mine to your luxury battery powered car. The sacks are full of cobalt ore, a crucial component in lithium ion batteries set to power the coming green energy revolution. But at what cost? There is growing evidence that the cobalt supply chain uses child labor. Companies say they're working hard to verify the source of all their hand-mined artisanal cobalt, but that it's a difficult task. We're here to follow the supply chain and see if we can do it for them. Before we set out, even the local governor warns us to expect to see children at work. We arrive at the Musanoi River mine, where the cobalt ore is washed to grind it down. Although we've been given permission to film here, as soon as they see us, officials begin to scare the children away. Not all of them, though, are fast enough. Some work on. One young boy staggers under his load. His friend sees the camera and he drops his sack. They've clearly been warned. A mining ministry official spots this boy carrying cobalt has been captured by our cameras. His response is brutal. Later, we ask him why he struck the child. He refused to answer. We've now witnessed for ourselves that children are working here, that they are involved with the production of cobalt, and we've seen the products of that child there were loaded onto a variety of different vehicles. I'm going to jump into this car that's headed to one of the main public selling cobalt depots. I'm told we're going to Kapasa Market. This is where the cobalt is bought by brokers. It's where it first enters the supply chain. The car company Tesla, for one, says its cobalt sources are audited and issued with certificates of origin. They wouldn't say from where or how, but there is no sign of certification here. We watch the brokers set the price, and none of them ask where the cobalt is from or how it was mined. Artisanal mining output tripled, and the fear is even more children are being pressed into labor. Why? Because cobalt is skyrocketing in price. Supplying your green electric car comes at a cost. We have permission to film here, but local mining officials once more try to stop us. Our producer captures the scene on a hidden camera. The government says it's working to combat child labor, but the same mining ministry officials tasked with enforcing an ethical supply chain have been the ones attempting to block our investigations. A police officer arrives and we're told we need to leave for our own safety. We do but not before we spot a red truck loaded up and leaving the very same market. It matches the distinctive red of the trucks used by one of the main international cobalt supply firms, China's Congo Dongfang Mining, CDM. We decide to follow it. We can't afford to lose him because where he delivers that cobalt load, that is the link between the children that you saw down there on the riverfront and the global markets. As the truck pulls into its final destination, guards rush out to block our cameras. Stop. Let's go. Okay. We later receive a warning phone call. This facility is under the protection of the presidential guard. We're told to stay away. What's going on? That appeared to be a CDM truck, but this isn't a CDM facility. Tax records show it was declared non-operational three years ago. Rising smoke and export records show cobalt is still produced here. CDM's parent company, Huayu, tells CNN they did have a relationship with the facility, which ended only last year. They're disturbed enough to launch an investigation into our findings. Although they state other companies also use red trucks. CNN visited three sites to show 
how widespread the use of child labour is. At this mine, in spite of our permissions, we eventually had to resort to filming undercover to capture the children. Nine years. We couldn't prove where exactly the dirty cobalt enters the international supply chain, but we witnessed that it does. Mercedes-Benz, Tesla, Fiat Chrysler, among others, say they have a zero-tolerance policy for the use of child labor, but they acknowledge they are unable to fully map their supply chain due to its complex nature. Car makers simply cannot promise consumers their products are 100% child labor free. This is the artisanal mining cooperative called Kasulu. It's run by the main international supplier, CDM. Rows and rows of red trucks like the one we followed await pickup here. Access and entry are controlled to block the presence of children and certificates of origin CDM say are dispensed in controlled circumstances. This is what the big brand names who source their cobalt from Congo believe governs their supply. But this is the exception, not the norm. The cobalt from Kasulu accounts for less than a quarter of the country's artisanal cobalt export. Here, the Ministry of Mining has to countersign for the certificate of origin to be considered valid. So, the very same entity whose officials CNN found complicit in hiding the presence of child labor at the artisanal mines we visited is responsible for certifying the cobalt here is child labor free. After 10 days in Congo, our contacts advise us to leave for our own safety. But what have we learned? At the main markets, nobody asks where the cobalt for sale is mined or how. We followed a truck to an operation that is pumping dirty cobalt into the international supply chain under the aegis of the Congolese Presidential Guard. We witnessed mining ministry officials harassing children to hide them from our cameras, while others blocked our filming. All employed by the same Congolese authority, car makers entrust to issue the certification. But from what we've witnessed, it's clear no manufacturer can fully assure you that your electric car is truly ethical. And as demand for essential cobalt soars, it's children like this little boy who are paying the real price. Nemal Bagher, CNN, Kolwezi, the Democratic Republic of Congo.